I and many other people have joked about how one day Microsoft is just going to drop the Windows kernel and then just ship Windows with a Linux kernel. And you know what? We're getting slowly closer and closer to that every single day. So this article in and of itself isn't anything too crazy. So what Windows 10 is going to have soon is integration with the Linux file system within File Explorer. So if you run Windows subsystem for Linux, as you'll know, it'll be a bit of a hassle to actually access your Linux file system. You have to go through the terminal and it's just... It's just not a clean process really. But what they're going to do is basically make it so you can access your Linux file systems directly from the Windows File Explorer, which is actually really cool. So Microsoft previously revealed its plans to ship a Linux kernel in Windows 10. I will go over that in just a moment. And basically what they're doing now is fully integrating the Linux file access into the built-in File Explorer. So as we can see right on this image here, there is a little icon down here and if you extend that icon out, you can see all of the different installs that this person has of Windows Subsystem for Linux. So what you can do from here is directly access the files on any of those installations without having to go through the terminal or without having to do any extra work. So this might not seem like anything too crazy, but if you actually combine this with all the sort of stuff that Microsoft has been doing over the past couple of years, you start to see a really obvious trend. Now, now, I don't think that Microsoft actually is going to replace the Windows kernel with a Linux kernel anytime soon, but you can definitely see how some people are starting to get this idea. So if we just go down a little bit more. So Microsoft's Windows subsystem for Linux is a system that the company has been gradually improving with the promise of a full Linux kernel for Windows. So Windows subsystem for Linux, which is already a very bizarre name. It's a very Microsoft-y name. It should be Linux subsystem for Windows, but if you understand some of the things that Microsoft has said in the past, you'll understand why it's Windows Subsystem for Linux and not Linux Subsystem for Windows. But anyway, we'll get onto that in just a moment. So a few years back, Microsoft added Bash integration. You've got native OpenSSH in Windows 10. You've got Ubuntu, SUSE Linux, and Fedora in the Windows Store. And you've also got the new Windows terminals. So let's just go have a look at some of that stuff. So this was last year. So this is a full Linux kernel being shipped in Windows 10. This is alongside the Windows kernel, so this is here for working with Windows Subsystem for Linux. So the reason that this basically exists, so beginning with Windows Insider build this summer, so that has already passed by now, we will include an in-house custom built Linux kernel to underpin the newest version of the Windows Subsystem for Linux. Once again, as I said, really bizarre name, but anyway. The kernel itself will initially be based on version 4.19, the latest long-term stable release for Linux. I'm going to assume that's probably an old kernel by now. It's probably been updated by this point. I'm not exactly sure what they are using. The kernel will be rebased at the designation of long-term stable releases to ensure that Windows Subsystem for Linux kernel always has the latest Linux goodness. So as you can see, they're shipping a Linux kernel with Windows to improve the Windows Subsystem for Linux. As you can see, they're kind of just trying to make the Linux experience on Windows better. And you've got things like the new Windows Terminal, which has been updated a few times since this point. But if you've seen the new Windows Terminal, you know that it's actually a good terminal, which is completely insane from a Windows perspective. Because if you look at, say, the older Command.exe or PowerShell, the it was absolute garbage. I still don't like PowerShell as a shell, but the PowerShell prompt that they were using, that was also pretty bad as well. But the new Windows Terminal is actually really good. It's... I don't, I, don't, I don't think it's anywhere near as good as something like Alacrity, but it's actually a usable terminal. I would put it on the same level as something like console or other programs like that. And you've also got things like when Microsoft added Bash to Windows, and you've got things like adding OpenSSH to Windows, as I was saying before. So this all fits into the grand meta-narrative of Windows, which is, or of Microsoft in general, which is Embrace, Extend, Extinguish. So if you've never heard of this before, so Embrace, development of software substantially compatible with a competing product or implementing a public standard. So that would be doing something like embedding Linux in Windows. So running a Linux VM under Windows. So, hey, look, we're, we're accepting open standards. We are accepting Linux. Then you've got Extend. So the addition and promotion of features not supported by the competing product or part of the standard, creating interoperability problems for customers who try to use the simple standard. So this is like using an in-house build 
of the Linux kernel rather than something that's more publicly available. So we have that as well. And then we've got the final stage, which is extinguish. So when the extensions become a de facto standard because of their dominant market share, they marginalize competitors that do not or cannot support the extensions. So as Microsoft continues to work on their custom Linux kernel, obviously I would expect them to be pushing some features up to the main kernel and overall everyone will get the benefits from that. But they're obviously not going to be able to push everything up because some features aren't going to be wanted in the main kernel. So what you're going to see happen is something very similar to what happened in the history of Unix with how macOS started basically. So if we have a look at this picture right here, as we can see macOS is right here. That was a continuation off of Next Step, which was forked off of BSD, which was all forked off of the Unix time sharing system. And Linux is over here, so Linux came from Minix, which came from the Unix time sharing system. So initially they all came from the same point, but as people fork their projects off, sometimes stuff's gonna get pushed back, sometimes it's not, and what you're gonna see happen is that over time, the differences are gonna become so great between these different versions of the kernel that eventually it's going to become an entirely separate thing. So what this basically is, is Microsoft trying to build their own version of the kernel which fits into, firstly, the embrace, which then fits into the extend and then the extinguish. So they're going to keep adding more and more features in that are gonna be different from the Linux kernel, which is gonna to get to the point where their features are so different that it's not even close to being a Linux kernel anymore. Now, am I one of the people who think that Microsoft is actually going to completely destroy Linux? No, I don't think that. I think that what's most likely to happen is that if Microsoft ever does decide to ship a Linux kernel with Windows as like the main kernel. They get rid of the uh, Windows NT kernel and they replace it with a Linux kernel. It would be something very similar to what macOS has done where it came from the same point, but it's not the same thing whatsoever because Microsoft has this massive backlog of legacy software that so many companies rely on. And Microsoft has already built up Windows to be this thing that basically will support software from like 1998. That's not really a thing that you can do on Linux. Yes, it's getting better with things like snaps and flat packs, but you're gonna run into problems even then. So I don't know what they would do. It would have to be some weird, I guess, amalgamation combination thing of the Windows kernel and the Linux kernel. In the end, I don't think it would be a good thing, but I could see them doing it just so they could actually keep the developers on Windows because I think that's the big thing they're really doing here. What we're seeing here is we're seeing the Linux kernel coming to Windows. We're seeing Bash integration. We're seeing OpenSSH, Ubuntu, SUSE, Fedora, and the new Windows terminal. All these things are very developer-centered features. None of this stuff is really relevant to a regular Windows user. What I think this is, is Microsoft trying to actually keep a hold of the developer community because at this point, there really is no reason to actually be on Windows or on macOS even, unless you're actually doing development specifically for that operating system. If you're doing any other sort of development, give me a single reason why you should even be on Windows. And that I think is what Microsoft is trying to address here because no home user actually cares about this stuff. This is entirely relevant to the developer community. Even though Windows is vastly more popular, there's so much tooling like Docker, for example, which were initially released on Linux. Yes, Docker did eventually come to Windows, but there's so much other stuff that just, it was released on Linux first and then just never made its way to Windows. So if you want to do the most cutting edge development work and it's not specifically Windows development and it's not specifically iOS or macOS development, there is basically no reason for you to even bother being on Windows because the way you're gonna get the most up-to-date tools is by being on Linux. Now, while some of these tools may not be in your standard repos if you're on one of the slower to update distros like Ubuntu, if it's built with Linux in mind, you can generally just compile it yourself and not really have to worry about the package repo. Now, I'm not one to generally dive down the conspiracy hole, but maybe now you can kind of understand why Microsoft would name it the Windows subsystem for Linux instead of the way it should be named, because to Microsoft, the Windows part in this equation is the most important part. So what they want to do, at least by my guess, is make the Linux experience on Windows much more similar to the Windows experience. So make it a, I guess, kind of merge together thing where now your Linux experience on Windows is gonna feel a lot more like your Windows experience when you're just generally using Windows. But it also comes with the benefit of holding on to those developers who maybe considering actually switching to Linux because 
you might not be happy with Windows if you're a Windows user, but generally people have to be pushed really far to make a major change like that. So if you can just add some of those creature comforts from Linux that the developers are looking for, but make it, I guess, integrate more into the Windows experience, they're not going to be as likely to leave. Now, this is kind of me just going off on a bit of a conspiracy, but maybe that's the case. I don't know. I don't know what's happening internally at Microsoft, but that is my best guess at the situation. So before I get lost on some tangent, I guess we can just end it there. So if you saw the last time that I did a news video, it wasn't very good. And I completely agree. It was an absolute mess. Everyone who said it was garbage, they were completely right. So what I've decided to do this time is try to make it a bit more similar to my regular sort of content. So what I did that last time was just basically read out the news and that doesn't make for entertaining content. So what I've tried to do this time is make it a bit more similar to my normal content read a little bit of the news and then I guess just follow some random tangent and basically see where my thoughts take me. So hopefully this time was a bit more entertaining. If it wasn't, let me know down below and I'll be more than happy to try out something else again. So before I end the video, I would like to thank a few people. So I want to thank my patrons, Andrew Rude, Elky Larry and Zilva, who helped make this channel possible. So if you want to support the channel or if you just want to have your name read out at the end of the video, there'll be a link to my Patreon down below. I've also got my social links, that'll be on my Discord, my Telegram and all of that sort of stuff and my alternate video platforms from my BitTube and my library. I've got some new Amazon affiliate links down below, so be sure to check those out as well. And remember to subscribe and ding the little bell down below. And lastly, remember to comment and smash the like button. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.